Well, I invite your attention this morning to uh, Luke's Gospel, chapter 1. And uh, while you're turning to that, I, let me just say uh, what, a, what a good serve free time we had last night here in celebrating Christmas Eve together. And I want to just say a special thanks to Pastor Kyle and uh, the worship team and the uh, These last few uh, weeks have been uh, very taxing and tiring, and, and they moved in the middle of it all as well. But uh, thank you, Kyle, for bringing leadership to us in that area. We thank you so much, and, and uh, for you all as well for supporting that as well. Luke's Gospel, chapter 1, beginning in verse 39, where we have the words of the Lord. Reminding us of that day. At that time, Mary got ready and hurried into a town in the hill country of Judea, where she entered Zechariah's home and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the baby leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. And in a loud voice, she exclaimed, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the child you will bear. But why am I so favored that the mother of my Lord should come to me? As soon as the sound of your greeting reached my ears, the baby in my womb leaped for joy. Blessed is she who has believed that the Lord would fulfill his promises to her. And then we have what they call Mary's song, beginning of verse 46. Mary said, My soul glorifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has been mindful of the humble state of his servant. From now on, all generations will call me blessed. For the mighty one has done great things for me. Holy is his name. His mercy extends to those who fear him from generation to generation. He has performed mighty deeds with his arm. He has scattered those who are proud in their inmost thoughts. He has brought down rulers from their thrones, but has lifted up the humble. He has filled the hungry with good things, but has sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel, remembering to be merciful. To Abraham and his descendants forever, just as he promised our ancestors. And Mary stayed with Elizabeth for about three months and then returned home. May the Lord add his blessing to this, his word this morning. Shall we recite our motto once again? The last time this year. Together, all together. Heavenly Father, I give you permission to speak to me, speak through me, to do whatever you want with my life. I trust the leadership of your Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen. 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 Very good. Well, the little boy quickly uh, reached for the Christmas package. It was from his grandma. He was so excited about opening it and seeing what was inside because grandma always came up with such interesting presents. And so he tossed aside the bow using a well-practiced two-handed method that seems to come instinctively to all children. He tore off the bright wrapping paper. There was a white box. The boy took hold of the top of the box. It stuck for a little bit. Then he finally tore off the top, tossed it aside, wadded up the tissue that was underneath it and dumped out what was inside. What was it? <laughs> His mom said, what a beautiful sweater! That looks great, said Dad. I wish I had one like that, said Grandpa. <laughs> I hope you like it, Grandma. The little boy sat there for a little bit and said, Oh, yuck! <laughs> Clothes! And he started crying. <laughs> and he couldn't be consoled. Have you been in that family? <laughs> <laughs> I guess he wanted toys, huh? I guess. You see, what we expect has a lot to do with how we respond to life. Expectations and life just go together somehow, don't they? 
Some would say, reach for the stars or you'll be settling for less than you can be. Expect the most. Others would say, don't expect too much and then you'll never be disappointed. So whose advice should we take this Christmas? What kind of expectation should we have? Ones that reach for the stars or ones that settle for whatever might happen to come along? Should we be filled with expectations or should we marvel at all that might be possible in our lives and in our world? Or should we calm our expectations and simply just hope beyond hope that nothing too awful will come our way? How should we see things this Christmas? Well, I think these questions of our expectations and how we see things are a very vital part of this passage of Scripture out of Luke. Because here in Luke's Gospel, we, we see that we meet two women, Mary and her cousin Elizabeth. Both women are pregnant, and both of them are just amazed that they are. Shocked. Neither of them had anticipated that they would, be, would conceive at this point in their lives. Pregnancy was far from their minds. The last thing they would have ever expected to be was pregnant. Elizabeth was an older woman. She had never conceived before. She never thought she would. She had actually quit thinking about it. And all of a sudden, here she was in her later years, pregnant. And when this news became apparent to her, she heard these words, and we have them recorded for us here in this very chapter, Luke chapter 1, verse 37. We didn't start there. First, she said, she heard the words, no word from God will ever fail. Other translations say, nothing is impossible with God. Nothing. And here's Mary, a, a young woman, just a child really, engaged but not married. She wasn't thinking about getting pregnant or even worried about it. Certainly not expecting it. But she was pregnant too. And when this news became apparent to her, she heard these words recorded back in, in verse 30 of Luke 1. The word she heard was do not be afraid. Nothing is impossible with God. Do not be afraid. Both of these women were confused and bewildered by these experiences. They were, they were unsure what to make of them, how to feel about them, how to respond to them. They didn't know how these events would affect their lives, and they wondered what to expect. Yet in their own ways, both women opened themselves to the possibilities that this turn of events might offer in their lives. They didn't just expect the worst. Rather they clung to much higher aspirations. Reaching for a star. They saw possibilities where others might only see problems. They saw hope where others might only experience helplessness. They saw marvelous responsibilities where others might have been miserable realities. And Mary, as the scripture says, takes the long journey to visit her cousin Elizabeth. And the, the journey probably took several days to get there. And Mary stays with Elizabeth during the last month of her pregnancy. And, and these two women, one older and filled with the wisdom of life, and the younger one filled with hope for the future. These two women became very good friends as they talk and wonder and worry and reflect on these unusual things that are happening to them. They spend long hours talking about what all this must mean. And in the end, they are filled with a sense that something powerful and wonderful is in the making. Something that will affect everything. Nothing will ever be the same. And they are. I'm going to ask you to use your imagination with me this morning. Picture the scene, will you? The scene was crowded, very crowded, hectic, frantic, <coughs> rushed, pressured. 
You got the feeling? You guessed it. I was in the mall. <laughs> Shopping with my family. And to take the monotony out of standing and looking over racks and racks of clothing and other such necessary items, I decided to take a break and wait out in the center of the mall and watch people. I like to do that. Just watch people. And I happened to plop down near the information area to wait. As I waited more or less patiently, I, I heard this very loud cry. And it went on and on. It was a shrill and panicked cry. And I looked around to see where the cry was coming from, and then I saw her. A lost child. And my heart was kind of hurt for this little girl. There she was, sobbing, screaming, terrified. The child didn't know where her parents were. And a lot of friendly folks around her bent down to speak to her. She cried all the harder, and someone even tried to take her by the hand. But she fearfully jerked her hand away, cried harder still. One of the mall employees noticed what was going on and paged the mall security. And another employee went to the child, tried to talk to her, got nowhere. Tried to take her hand, got nowhere. And then began asking everyone around, no one in particular, but just everyone, whose child is this? <laughs> whose child is this? Nobody knew. Within a few moments, seemed like forever, the child's dad came on the scene just in the nick of time for this girl looked like she was about to fall apart. And then she recognized dad and she ran to him. Dad knelt down, scooped his daughter in his arms, gave her a long reassuring hug and kiss on the cheek. And everyone knew then whose child this was. Both dad and child have tears running down their cheeks, so happy that that nightmare was over. In that wild scene in the mall, crowds of people, some interested in this child, others giving quick glances and rushing by, others had absolutely no idea that anything out of the ordinary was happening. But it strikes me that the question of Christmas had been lifted up. What is the question of Christmas? Whose child is this? Whose child is this? It's the question that Elizabeth and Mary struggled with and resolved in their own mind with such high expectations. It's the question that you and I are invited to struggle with also. For whose child is this? This is the child who transforms all life and will transform our lives if we'll let him. Whose child is this? This is God's child. The child who lets us know that God cares in powerful ways. The child who whispers to us the things that are really important, things that, that really matter, things that we can trust now and forever. The child who delivers God's wondrous presence if only we stop long enough and quiet ourselves enough to see and hear that presence. Whose child is this? This is our child. The child of our hopes and of our dreams. It's the child of our fondest imaginings. The child who can bring those things that so deeply we want to this tumultuous world and to our troubled lives. It's our child. This is the child who brings the peace that passes all understanding, that invites us to meanings that go far beyond the external trappings of life, that go far beyond the pains of disappointments we may go through in life. Whose child is this? This is the world's child. The one who can direct us to what is important. The one who can focus on what deeply matters. The one who can become 
the center of meaning and purpose in life. Even our lives. Right here. Right now. What are our expectations this Christmas? What are our hopes? Whose child is this? Does he belong to you? Do you belong to him? Hmm. Can I share with you another story? I think I have time. In 1994, two Americans answered an invitation from the Russian Department of Education to, to teach morals and ethics based on biblical principles in the public schools. They were invited to teach at prisons and businesses, the fire and police departments, and a, and a large orphanage. And as it neared the holiday season, the orphans heard the traditional Christmas story for the very first time. The Americans told them about Mary and Joseph arriving in Bethlehem. And after finding no room in the end, Mary and Joseph went to a stable where Jesus was born and placed in the manger. Throughout the story, the children listened in amazement. Some of them sat on the edges of their stools trying to grasp every word. And as a follow-up activity to the story, each child was given three small pieces of cardboard to make a crude manger. Each child was also given a small paper square cut from yellow napkins that the children tore into little strips and then carefully laid them in the manger for straw. Small squares of flannel from a discarded nightgown were used for the baby's blanket. Pieces of tan felt were used for the doll-like baby. And as they made their way around the room to observe the children, one of the Americans noted, and they said this, all went well until... I got to one table where a little six-year-old Misha sat. He appeared to have finished his project, and as I looked at the little boy's manger, I was startled to see not one, but two babies in the manger. So quickly I called for the translator to ask the lad where there were two babies in the manger. Why were they there? The observer noted that Misha very accurately recalled the story that had been told until he came to the part where Mary put Jesus in the manger. And Misha then started to ad-lib his own ending to the story. And this is what he said. And when Maria laid the baby in the manger, Jesus looked at me and asked me if I had a place to stay. I told him I had no mama and I had no papa, so I don't have any place to stay. And then Jesus told me, I could stay with him. But I told him I couldn't because I didn't have a gift to give him like everybody else did. I wanted to stay with Jesus so much, I thought about what I had that maybe I could use for a gift. And so I asked Jesus, if I kept him warm, would that be a good enough gift? And Jesus told me, if you keep me warm, that will be the best gift anybody ever gave me. And so... I got into the manger, and then Jesus looked at me and told me that I could stay with him for always. Amen. As Misha finished his story, his eyes became <clears throat> full of tears that splashed down his little cheeks. And put his, putting his hand over his face, his head dropped to the table and his shoulders shook as he sobbed and, and sobbed. And, that little orphan boy had found someone who would never abandon him or abuse him. Someone who would stay with him for always. My friends, that's the message of Christmas. That you have a place to stay. Right beside Jesus. And he offers that to us today. And I'm so glad he came. <laughs> I'm so glad he came. Not only did he change my life. But he brought joy. To me. And to you. To our Lord. Whose child is this? <laughs> He's mine. Yes. 
It's yours. Amen? Amen. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we come again to the manger of Bethlehem. And with all the tapestry of customs and culture, Lord, we pray that the good news of Christmas will come into our hearts and our lives. And may we join the babe in the manger. <coughs> Lord, you come to us. Come to us today in, in some unexpected way. Surprise us with a transforming miracle in our hearts. So that the joy and spirit of Christmas may stay with us now and forever. Lord, so that we might join you in the manger. That you offer us a place right beside you. So that joy not only could be ours, but we can share that joy with others. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord, for giving up your place in heaven to become one of us, to lay in a cattle trough that you could take care of my sin, my shame, that you could take my discipline, and you could make it all right. Thank you. Now, thank you for the joy we have to share today because you came. It is joy to the world. Now, help us to spread that joy in Jesus' name.